Absolutely. Thank you. Um, as Michael and I were talking, we were always thinking about ways that we can best bless you and your students and just wondered if we could get some feedback about these webinars and maybe what you need. And so let me put this link in the chat here. It's just a Google form. It'll be very quick. We'd love uh, to hear your feedback on that. Awesome. That's it. Thank you, Josh. Okay, I'm going to uh, share a, a, a PowerPoint real quick for my part of my presentation. I'll, I'll be presenting today. Um, and what I wanted to focus on today is about student engagement um, and how to increase it. How do we get how do we get our students to be able to have the experience that that they're interacting with each other and that you're having the opportunity to help them go through some things. So here's a couple things that I'd like to share. Uh, first of all, it's really all about sense of purpose. And so in the Seminaries and Institute training, there's this fantastic video clip that the um, Seminary and Institute students kind of share what purpose is. So let's start with that. I love the Savior because He is the ultimate example to us. He atoned for all of our sins just so that we could return to our Heavenly Father by reading the scriptures and by studying and by having class discussion and feeling the Spirit and all these other things that come along with seminary. I can gain a better understanding of the eternal perspective instead of just what's happening right now and that can help me to be a better person. I love studying the scriptures in seminary and, and in my own home because it really is a foundation of our gospel and it's always something that I can fall back on if I'm having a hard day or I feel like I can't talk to anyone or I want to be by myself. I have that personal time with myself, my scriptures, and the Savior. One of the greatest times I feel the Spirit in seminary is when uh, our seminary teachers teach about our modern day teachings and the modern day prophets of the last general conferences and the talks that we share in class and learn about those, those are some of the most inspirational and spiritual times that we have in seminary. My feelings on the Savior have they've changed a lot since I've gone through seminary. He's become more of a friend. He just wants the best for you and he loves you. The atonement is a great example of that. He wants nothing but the best for you. I have set high expectations for my students. I have noticed that if I don't have high expectations, they won't meet that. Nobody rises to lower the expectations. I think our teacher um, expects us to be there with our full attention and to share and to give examples and to tell stories and to participate. And by participating, um, we can feel the spirit and the lesson it just means so much more when we all participate. I expect my students to be in the classroom. I expect them to be paying attention and to be participating. Something I, my teacher expects from me and my classmates is for us to be willing to share and be willing to talk about what we're going through. If you want the students to have the Holy Ghost with them in their own personal experiences, first of all, they have to be invited to do something, whether it's pray, read your scriptures, uh, share a testimony, they have to be given that invitation first and then be held accountable uh, through a follow-up. Let them have that experience with the Holy Ghost in their personal lives and invite them to bring that and share those experiences in the classroom. So as they come prepared, as they come willing to participate, and even as they come with questions, um, the seminary experience will be a lot better for them. We center our lessons in the scriptures and make sure to find our discussions within the scriptures. Um, it will bring a different power in their lives that we can't bring ourselves. My seminary teacher had a passion for the scriptures. She was so like willing and just so excited and would try and get us all like pumped to get in our scriptures and to really dig in. I have a seminary teacher that has an amazing excitement for the scriptures. She always helps to bring the scriptures to life for me. It's as if I'm really there in the story. Her excitement helps me to be excited when I come to class and learn from the lessons. When we go over the scripture mastery 
in that specific section. He'd be like, oh, okay, here's here's the scripture master we're going over today. You guys got to write this one down and mark it. And it made me excited to learn those. The words of the scriptures are the words of our Savior. And if we use them in class, then the students are hearing the voice of the Savior in their lives. Being more fully prepared is the best way, I think, to invite the Spirit into a classroom. He works through us as we're preparing, as we're reading, as we're studying. Uh, that allows Him to then uh, guide and direct. And if we truly believe that our classrooms are being guided and directed by the Spirit, that process begins with our preparation, with our lesson, with our material. We have to pay the price ahead of time so that, that uh, our minds are serene and confident so we're not worried about what we're going to next or what question we're going to ask or what scripture we're going to look at and the flow of the lesson. Without those distractions, then I believe the Holy Ghost can be there. Okay. What I want to do is just kind of have a chat with you about, number one, what what are you hearing and seeing as you went through those video, or the, as we went through the video clips? What stood out to you? And that we need to be excited. If we're excited, then our excitement will get others excited about the scriptures. Exactly. So how do you do that online? <laughs> that's why we're here, so you can teach us. <laughs> so that, I think that's one of the things that I wanted to, I w I'm going to get into a little bit more in just a second, but I think it's a really important to recognize that you have a screen in front of a student. And if you're just sitting back and just talking, or even if you're as close to the screen as possible and you're just talking, sometimes um, the student's going to be like, wow, this is really, really hard. Um, so use your hands. Uh, use your pictures on your wall. Uh, whatever you want to, to be able to, to make it, to spice it up a little bit. But just be you in terms of as, as if you were in front of your class. Um, I think that's important. Sister Crouch, go ahead. So one of the things the Spirit said to me during the, you know, what are you hearing that's not being said was, um, so I have a real love to yeah. uh, reading the scriptures every day and a testimony of that. And so I started scribbling out notes that I think I'm either going to make a video this week for my class, or maybe I'll just do it in a, a note to them, but, and just, a challenge each week I've been giving my students a challenge and a challenge to um, study the scriptures every single day and if you're not doing that yet then start with one verse a day start with five minutes a day start with a goal that you can commit to and keep over a long time you know for the rest of your life um, and um, and I was also thinking about tying it in with Isaiah. So I love, I'm one of those people that actually loves Isaiah. And one of the reasons why I love Isaiah is because of his descriptions of the Savior. And that's what my class is, is the um, Jesus Christ and the everlasting gospel. And so I think too, I'm going to include something about this, um, about Isaiah. And that if you're, you know, look for that particular uh, fits our class, because look for Jesus Christ as you're studying those verses for come follow me this week and as you find him that will make isaiah be, start to become more alive for you as you because he has such beautiful wonderful personal descriptions of jesus christ which ties into what our lesson was last week the descriptive words of jesus christ anyway that was a lot sorry no, <laughs> love it thank you any other thoughts that stood out Okay, so what I want to then understand is connection. So let me uh, share this slide again. Um, here, here are the connections that we're trying, we're trying to have happen with our students. We want them to be connected to the Savior. We want them to be connected to you as the instructor. And we want them to be connected with their peers. So as you look at the instructional design of the learning management system, or as you look at the way that Zoom works, 
there's a lot of different ways you can use the tools to focus on these things. And I, I think that's where the red arrows would be considered is th that would be your tools, finding ways to have them connect, getting into the scriptures or having one on ones with you. So as you look then at uh, the way we, we're, we're trying to accomplish a few things, notice how things are set up a little bit. We've got students are inside uh, studying on their own in the learning management system in the in the the, the scriptures, words of living prophets, the curriculum. Um, maybe you've given them some things to look at or to read in an announcement or a, or a post of some kind. Then there's a processing taking place where they're having that video conference with you or the Zoom meeting um, and opportunities for them to be able to, to apply. A lot of this is, is pretty much called a flipped instruction or flipped classroom. But the truth is, what we're really wanting to have, have happen is you're facilitating connection all over the place. In the classroom, you have an, as an instructor at the front of the room who's being able to move around and ask questions, point on people, and you get instant feedback whether or not they're, they're with you. And so one of the things that as you're trying to facilitate these, these, uh, this process you're having a lot of great ways to be able to fail <laughs> and succeed. And what I mean by that is you don't know what's happening sometimes because, like I said at the beginning, the student's just looking at a screen no matter what's happening. And there's a lot of distractions that can take place outside of that screen that you have no control over. So here are a few things that may help um, regardless of the distractions that take place. Uh, first of all is communicate in multiple formats. So use every way that you think you can possibly think of to be able to in, in Canvas, for example. So like the announcement page, um, an inbox message, a video clip of you talking or, or sharing something. Um, have your students engage by doing opportunities to do some things. So maybe, for example, you have an activity for them to, so let's let's use Sister Crouch for example. She's talking about the, the names of the Savior in her class. So an activity could be, all right, let's create a family home evening lesson about the names of Jesus Christ. You go teach it to your family or to your roommates for, for our institute students. Uh, maybe you help a family member with a goal or maybe it's calling a friend, but they're doing something that where they're able to actually take what you're learning and instantly uh, apply it into the into a situation. Um, another part is is trying to create a community, uh, some making learning social where they're trying to help each other out. That one I'm going to talk about a little bit more with that on ways some some ways to make that helpful. But give them feedback too. Um, help them understand how they are doing in the classroom. So maybe they're not really providing any information in the discussion board. So have a parent-teacher conference with them for a seminary student or have a, a student-teacher uh, conference for an institute. And let, let's be open and honest with each other and say, hey, I, I know you can do more. I need you to do more. We really need to learn from you as much as anything else. Uh, but then, And then praise them. It goes so far when you have the chance to be able to tell someone else in front of them how wonderful wonderful they are. Uh, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago with, with Brother Miller, but this is really kind of a, another way that can help engage. Uh, so I, I love giving my students ownership of the class. In seminary, I would have a, a seminary class presidency that would get class going and get started. I tried that in institute and it didn't really work that well. Um, it's it's kind of difficult, but I did have individuals in my institute that were my quick feedback. They'd always tell me how things were going, and I would call on them to do things in the class. So let me give you some examples. Last semester in the Divine Gift of Forgiveness class, I had a, a, a sister who was, um, she, everybody called her grandma because she was, in her 70s, she's a wonderful sister, and uh, she was just willing to be everybody's grandma that was in her pathway cohort and everything. It, it, and it was one of those things where everybody in her pathway cohort 
wanted to know what institute class she was taking because they wanted to be in with her. She just loved these students that were in her class with them. And I wanted to make sure I took that into my institute class. And so I would do often, um, I, I would call on, on uh, we'll call her Sister Smith. I'd call Sister Smith individually and ask her, what can I do more in this class? What would you like to do to help me in this class? What are some things that I need to focus on or do differently in this class? And she was so willing to share, but she also was so willing to be the leader. And so for a breakout group, for example, in a Zoom classroom, I had her give the assignments of what they were going to do. And they would do anything for her. And so they were very engaged and, and being able to be a part of it. Um, I would try to do something different every single Zoom class. Um, I, I did something where I had them create a, uh, a video as if they were a newscast and, and to record it and then come back and share it. Um, and then I'd at the end, as after they, they shared everything, and at the end of the class, I said, was that helpful or relevant? And they're like, that was really dumb, Brother Goldheart. <laughs> Which was good, though. I needed that kind of feedback. Even though it was giving them relevant or giving them engagement, they didn't like it. But they knew that they could be honest with me, and I would never do it again. And I think that was also very key to the ownership of the class for the students because they were willing to try something new because they knew at the end if they didn't like it I wouldn't do it again. Adversely one of the, the key things we call the uh, advice for your parent and what it was was um, or advice from your parent excuse me at the at each of the the big key principles of divine gift of forgiveness I would always ask what is something that your parents have said that have matched what we learned from Elder Anderson? And then they would share their parents' thing. They loved it. They loved sharing what their mom, dad, grandma has, has taught them growing up. And they loved how it, it coincided with gospel doctrines and principles. And as I, when I first tried it and I heard that they had such engagement from it, I asked them, did you like that? Like, yeah, we want to do this more often. And so it was part of our class every other week almost. So give your students some ownership is a really good way to get some engagement. Th this one's really a big part of engagement, and that's change. You have to recognize that students, learners, or, or engaged learners are always thinking and moving. And the more you change things up, the more you're going to be able to allow your students to um, rethink and refocus. Uh, there's a lot of research that's that's been taken place that shows that a students a high school student's brain right now is only paying attention for about six seconds uh, because of the way the Instagram and those videos work. If they, you can't capture them in six seconds, they're done. Now that's pretty that's like impossible to do in a class. So I would always try changing things up as much as I can using videos, using PowerPoints, using uh, breakout rooms. Uh, but also in Canvas, I would throw things like, hey, um, I need somebody to take a picture of the, the coolest tree they could find. And I need you to send it to me before next week. And then I would use that picture to be the, the video or the, the, the main picture for a, a, one of the modules in Canvas. So I was using them to help me make the class different. And they would look forward for those things. Uh, it, it was something super easy to mix up the content method. I, I also really believe in bringing in guest speakers and instructors so they're not just seeing my face. That's why I try to bring in different people. Now, for seminary, that's a big deal to make sure that they are approved by your stake leaders. So if you're going to do something like that, clear it with your coordinator. For institute, just make sure that if you're going to do something like that, just check with me or... or uh, Josh, and make sure that they're they're cleared to be in front of your students. If it's a priesthood leader or a seminary institute coordinator, uh, you have, you're more than welcome to do it. Uh, mission president would be fine as well. Uh, patriarch. Sometimes um, there's mm -hmm. parts where we could bring them in. Yes, please. Oh, no problem. Um, the biggest thing is keep the element of surprise alive. That it, that'll get your students going through some pretty cool stuff. Uh, the, the second to last thing is be a storyteller. Case studies are pretty interesting. Uh, it's 
they're really interested in finding how to align with somebody in a story. I'm going to actually have, there. we have one of our, he's probably the best that I've seen do this in Canvas, Brother Trent Allen. He's my seminary principal in Arizona um, for online seminary there. I'm going to have him come teach us how to do that for one of these, these, uh, these classes so that he can show some of the things that he's doing. But as you do it, assign your students to maybe have them come up with the practice or principle or story about something. Uh, there are tons of videos on churchofjesuschrist.org that may help that could enhance your lesson. So use it. There's nothing wrong with editing it. And that's really the last thing. Edit your course. Uh, please don't just let it go out the door. As it, There's a lot of problems with it just being somebody else's work. So adjust, adjust it, adapt it to meet the needs of your students. You have family situations, there's class situations. Just follow the Spirit. If you feel like there's something that you feel your class needs, add it, change it, delete it. Uh, you're more than welcome to do that for any of your classes. So those, those are just a few really simple, and I'll send you the PowerPoint so you can, you can use that list. Um, the sad thing is, is you, you could probably do about another five pages worth of just these bullet points. There's a lot of ideas out there that can help you engage with online learners. I tried to pick the best ones that I have, that I have used, but all of them are, are based on sound research for online learning. Uh, and it's very interesting to see that in, in online learning, the more you can get your students to go and do something, the more you're going to have them into the content and into your, your lesson. And so find ways to get them to go and do, and then return and report what they've done. Uh, any thoughts of things or, or ideas that you have tried that have been fantastic to engage your learners? And then we'll get to some Q&A. Go ahead, Sister Crouch. So this is something I did actually um... It's, it's an apart thing, but so I had one girl get in touch with me who um, she's 17, who's in my class, and she's actually in young women's as well. And and they had changed the night of this activity and that she wanted to go to. And so I gave her this challenge that she had to then testify to somebody about some of the things she was learning about Jesus Christ and then report back to me. Um, because I told her that was the biggest thing she would miss from the gathering was that bearing testimony and, and doing something together. And so she actually wrote a letter bearing her testimony to her si an older sibling sister that's um, a little bit inactive. And then she shared with me parts of those and reported back of um, just that experience for her of pouring out her heart to her sister and telling her how important Christ was in her life. And then I had a couple of people who came into my class since the, we had our gathering Tuesday night that came on Wednesday and what could they do and whatever. And so I gave them each challenges too that they had to find a way to bear their testimony to a family member or a friend or a non-member and report back. And it's been kind of fun now to read receive back their, um, one of them has reported back. The other one told me what they're going to do, but has not reported back yet. But it, um, it was just kind of cool to hear, you know, from them what they were doing and things so that they could have that experience at least with somebody bearing their testimony about Christ or telling what they were learning. I like that. Good idea. We had a few other ideas out there. I like the, the missionary idea. Um, uh, I had a teacher tell me that there was a, they brought in a, a patriarch to teach about in the, in the last Old Testament part of the, the patriarchs. And so they had, had their stake patriarch come in and, and teach and have a Q&A with them. I thought that was a fantastic idea. Um, I love young women in my seminary class meet at the temple. Sweet. Um, which, you know, I, I like that, Sister Dean. Just an, another idea. Um, you don't have to teach your class. I actually was, I was this close to making it happen. Unfortunately, I had a meeting here at the Institute, so I couldn't make it work. I actually wanted to teach this class um, in my barn. 
And I wanted to t talk about engagement of trying to get, I have a, a, a new calf that's just not, she's not drinking her milk right now. And so I wanted to show you how frustrating it is to try to get a dang calf to, to, to suck on a bottle. But, uh, cause sometimes I feel like it's the same exact ways to get some of our students to engage in our class and to show that there are tricks for a farmer to get a, a calf. And I thought it was a really dumb idea, but it was something to get us out of the, the classroom and and take you into the midst of something different. Do it. If you want to teach a class at, up in the mountain or, or at a temple or whatever, there, it's a sense of surprise. It gives gives our students something new to do. Uh, Sister Cole and Brother Cunningham. You're muted, Sister Coles. There. Sorry about that. Um, I just have a small seminary class. About I usually have about 10 that uh, participate in the Zoom meetings, but they're so spread out throughout the state that they don't really know each other very well. And one of my challenges is trying to help them come together as a class and get to know each other. Um, some of the kids really are remote and they don't know a lot of people because they live so far away. Um, so I think one thing that has helped a little bit is just give them time to talk about what's going on in your life right now, what's happening with your activity at school or your sports, you know, how's your team doing, um, and let them have a minute to give us a little update on their lives because they don't have that opportunity to socialize very much. And I think until they get to know each other a little better, it's kind of hard for them to, to feel that unity. The other thing is um, I have found that if I try to use too much technology that I lose them. And I find that when I keep it really simple and I can see all their faces on my screen and they can see mine um, and it's not covered up by anything else, um, I feel like I have a better connection with them when we have a discussion. So I do pull up PowerPoints or videos, but I really try to turn them off as quickly as I can so that they can talk about it and I can see their faces. To me, that's really important. Fantastic. Thank you. Brother Cunningham. Yeah, um, last year in seminary, um, because of my background in radio and video, um, I had, there was a church video that came out that had no audio to it. It was just music. So I had them kind of write the script and record their voices of what they think should be said during the video. Now I have it queued up and I'm happy to share it. It's about three and a half minutes long, but uh, if not, that's fine. But it was very, very um, successful, very powerful. In fact, we played it at the seminary graduation, but it was uh, really surprising. We're in the Old Testament and they chose to speak about Christ. Cool. I like that. Okay, so here's the question I want to pose to you. We have, especially in online institute, but we have them in online seminary too. We have students who are, um, their testimony is super small. They're either taking seminary because they have to for an institute requirement or from a seminary requirement from their parent. Um, and so getting them to be engaged because is really kind of a, a ask for them because they don't know if they have a testimony. They don't even know if the church is true. What have you done to help get those students to engage? Wow, we got some good stuff on this one. It's hard, isn't it? Go ahead, Ben. So I, uh, this is an example that we had from the young women's president uh, from my daughters. Um, they were, one was very engaged and one was less engaged. Uh, but the, the neat thing was when this new uh, young women's uh, president was called, um, she loved the girls first. She didn't expect anything. She didn't judge them. She didn't uh, have, you know, oh, well, you're the kid who doesn't show up. You're the kid who does show up. There was none of that. She loved them first, and that bought all the goodwill that she needed. Um, this woman was not the smartest person in the ward. She was not the strongest testimony in the ward. She was not the most organized person in the ward, um, but she loved the girls more than any other leader we had had. 
And that made all the difference for my daughters being engaged with her. I love that. Sister Dean. I, I agree with Sister Cole about the sharing one good thing that's happened in the week or in, in calling it a tender mercy or whatever. But I, one of the ones that I had and I shared with my students at one point, now I live in Lexington, Kentucky. And um, I went to one of the football games with my brother-in-law and I took a picture of the uh, Wildcat mascot doing push-ups after um, UK had got some points. That's what he, uh, the, that always happens. And that was my tender mercy for the week. And, you know, I mean, because I was with my brother-in-law, I was having fun and to let them know that sometimes tender mercies are just kind of everyday events. It's not something big. It's something you just open your eyes to. And I, I tried to encourage them to look for tender mercies and identify them, the little things. And that's what grows your testimony. I love that. I want to talk about an, uh, an institute example, and then we'll, let's talk about a seminary example. Um, kind of using the same thing. And I've, I've tried to, to, to share as much as I can of, of how much I love using cell phones um, to be able to reach my students. So if you don't know how, I, for institute, we're going to make sure that we have everything. If you haven't had a chance to get, I'm going to, I'm going to actually pull up a class to show you, and I, I made a test class so that I can be able to use it in the recording. Um, so let me pull up, first let me um, stop this PowerPoint. Let me pull up what's called My Class. Now you're probably familiar with what My Class is, but let me walk you through a setup so that you can see um, what it is, let me move some things over. Sorry about that. Okay, so if you go to myclass.churchofjesuschrist.org, this is a fantastic way to be able to take role. So you just log in, and I've got this two-way uh, authentication, just a second way get that get that up and running okay so my class is gonna look a little different for me because I have to I have the whole world on here so let me let me pull up the class that's my uh, let's go to North America online oh, there we are okay and I called it test so here's my students. This is my class, and this is the, the day that they're able to do things. Now, just a couple things that I want to show with this to showcase, then you, and then I'll show what I'm talking about. Um, let's say that almost everybody was here. So I'm going to first mark everybody is present. And um, the reality was is that Joseph wasn't absent, and or Joseph was absent, and Ashley was absent. That was that's just the way I do it. Super easy. Um, gives me a chance to be able to go day by day for this but what I what I like about this is when I pull up Joseph's information I have his number and his um, email address and so what I could do is I could actually give him a phone call right now now I will take this on my cell phone when I when I do roll so I'll actually just click on the number and I'll give give him a call um, he won't answer it because he's on his mission in Brazil and that's not his phone number. I don't know what that number is. Uh, but that's a really simple way to be able to uh, get a hold of students. And that's so whether it's seminary or institute, um, if they filled this out correctly, that gives you at least a number. Now, uh, there's a couple other ways that you can reach them, uh, but that's a fantastic, simple way. Sister Coles, you have a question about it. Yes, um, in seminary, I they're required to put a phone number on there to register. Are they? I mean, when I've had them set up their profiles, I'm not 
getting a lot of contact information. Some of them put their parents' emails, things like yeah. that. Is there anything you can, I mean, I have them fill out a kind of a get to know you form at the beginning of the year and I have to manually just make my own email list and that kind of thing. Because if they don't put it on, there's no way I can, is that correct? That's correct. So if they, if you don't have it, you'll need to collect it. Now for a seminary, I actually will, will, will text their parents, um, mainly for safety reasons, but I think it's also important to, to assist them in their work. Um, either way, whether it's seminary or whether it's my institute students, I'm going to record a video on, on my uh, text message system uh, so that if whatever kind of phone system you use, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to record a video and I'm just going to be like, hey, Joseph, um, I just wanted you to know how grateful I am for you or I missed you in class today. I just wanted you to know how much I love you and, and glad you're in this class. Something super simple, maybe 45 seconds max. And I'm going to send it to them. Uh, that, even though that's a, a a simple little thing, you'd be surprised how it changes the engagement of that student. Um, I also will send something like that where a student, if some, if I get a student that's coming into my class that's hasn't been there for a while, um, I'm going to send them a text or or a message and just be like, Hey, Joseph, I'm so glad you were in class today. That that comment you made on such and such was powerful. Thank you for sharing. Um, little things like that go a long way, and and that's why I I love having my phone to be able to do that. So that, that's just one one idea that could help on that. And you can do that both for seminary or institute. Oh, thanks, Chris, for sending your voiceover video. That's fantastic. Okay, um, let's go through questions real quick or comments in the uh, chat that, that we probably want to make sure everybody hears. Um, Maureen, could you could you comment a little bit more about this one? Because I love this, this statement that you had. Are you able to do that? Can you hear me? Uh-huh. Okay, sorry, my video isn't working. Um... So since I'm in seminary, at least our state, we're not allowed to text students directly. Um, and, you know, with parents, it doesn't always work to text a parent with a student, but we are allowed to communicate through Canvas. So we've only had two Zoom meetings. Um, our, our first week, I noticed that we were missing two students and I knew one of them and I didn't know the other one. And um, so I just sent them a message the night before and they didn't reply to it, but they were both there the next day. Um, I think we only had three students out of our entire roster of, I think we have 26 or 27 who did not come, which is really cool. And then um, we like to, we pretty much lay out clear expectations about what we expect for an online class, because especially with teenagers, it can be a slippery slope when a couple kids don't have their cameras on, all of a sudden no one wants to. Um, and you know, then some students think, well, I'm just gonna do the modules and I'm never gonna wake up at 6 a.m. on Friday to do class. So we actually, um, with our CES coordinator and stake, um, the stake person, supervisor, we actually decided to make it a requirement to do the Friday morning Zoom and they have to commit to doing that in order to join the online class. And so we've had great success with that. And we also added, please, that you do have to have your camera on and I know I don't have mine on, <laughs> but it's just for technical difficulties. Um, but I have two kids, they're a brother and a sister that won't turn their camera on and their parents are not supportive. They have the capability and the parents are basically not cooperating. And I, you know, it's kind of dicey. So I thought, you know, what can I do? You know, um, and I looked up in the modules and I saw, you know, you can click on people and see how much time they're spending. And I'm like, okay, you know what, these kids, they're spending plenty of time in their modules. Their discussions with the class are really great. You know, they're interacting. And I thought, well, 
they're interacting in the module. So I think I'm going to have, I'm, I'm just going to reach out to the daughter who's a senior and ask if she'd be willing to do the devotional and a couple that, and I reach out over um, Canvas in, you know, through the email system there and she agreed to tomorrow. So that's that experience. So, but of course not singling anyone out and saying, Hey, turn your camera on. You know, I just, I'm just kind of like, Hey guys, turn them on. We need everybody on. And what I do tell parents is typically if the camera is not on, they are scrolling social media and not paying attention. So that's why we do it. And usually they're okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. There are some, some situations that we need to be careful because we do, we have found uh, worldwide that um, there are some homes in the church that we probably wouldn't feel very welcome in. And sometimes those students are really uncomfortable sharing that home with the rest of the ward. And so just be, uh, be very careful as you're, you're making requests to have your cameras on. Um, I, I have shared this before, but I actually had a, 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 a student last semester that she would not turn her camera on. And after a one-on-one -on -one several times, it was because of her home situation. And so I just invited her to, to take it on her phone and have it in the car or out in the woods and and she was she was so grateful that I gave her that option and, and she would try as much as she could to do that. And when she was there and and her camera was off, I knew I knew why. Uh, but I had to have that conversation with her so that she was comfortable and she knew that I was comfortable with her as long as she would try and she knew that I was asking um, a little bit about that. So I love that you weren't singling them out, uh, Maureen. That's fantastic. Uh, Sister Dean, we're going to close with your last comment. Go ahead. So I'm looking at my classroom. It's cool. But did you say that I should have, I should be able to see my students? Yeah. Email if, if, number? Because all I'm seeing are parents. It might be because of the, being a seminary classroom. Let me double check. I will find out about that, Sister Dean, and I'll have, I'll, I'll respond back to everybody because maybe for seminary it just does. I just well, looked in my class and I can see my students, but some students. of the contact information is like their parents' email. Likely. That's probably so what they put for so, their contact. So it may be that because they're not in my ward, I can't see them. No, uh, I have If I go to tools, if I use tools and try to look up a student that's not in my ward, I can't. I can see the parents, but I can't see the kids. I can see the kids that are in other wards in my on my my class. I don't oh, know. Oh, I can't. Double sister Dean, will you check with your administrative assistant and let's see if there's something going on with those specific students? Oh, it's it's the stake. Is it the stake? The administrative assistant. It's the stake. Oh, you're missing that, that happen. Because however they put me in in the calling it doesn't let me see the other wards the students in the other wards well um, I, once we once we close this and we go through questions let's pull up your your stake and we can look it up and see then i can i can have your coordinator and administrative assistant know what we're seeing sound good well i can tell them too okay either way it works i can tell my stake president <laughs> Well, brothers and sisters, uh, hopefully this gave you some ideas um, or at least some thoughts or some impressions. Uh, I, I just want to just bring it down to one simple request. Um, be very cautious when you're, as you're teaching and testifying and sharing on in, in Canvas and in Zoom that we, we don't forget the reason why we're doing what we're doing. That is to bring... Uh, these youth and young adults to the Savior. When I teach in an institute class or seminary class, I always have the Savior on the whiteboard. I love having the Savior on the whiteboard. When I am trying to teach in front or, or in Canvas or Zoom, I, I want to find ways to bring the Savior in the same way. Um, will you just remember how easy it is to forget? I think that's probably the best part about the, or the worst part about Canvas is as you're going through all the technology stuff, it's really easy to, to forget to have an opening prayer or a closing prayer or make sure that it's centered on the Savior. 
uh, I know I do it all the time because it's easy. We're used to doing business meetings in, in Zoom, and it's we're used to just chatting and talking, and it takes up time. So don't forget him because that he will help with engagement more than anything else. Our goal in engagement is to get the students talking, but the reality is we want the Holy Ghost to be talking just as much and to allow them to have a conversion experience in the, in the scriptures and, and be able to connect with the Savior. I know that the Savior is very much a part of online seminary and online institute. I know that as the students are getting into the scriptures, they truly are having a one-on-one -on -one experience with Him. And I love that. And I love that our role is helping them and facilitating that opportunity. And I'm so grateful for what you're doing. And say that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, I'm going to...